In the crucifixion story, we're going to pick up again at Luke chapter 23, beginning at verse 39. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Atonement, in just a few sentences, one of the thieves crucified next to Jesus somehow recognizes his king. A and what a king! And what faith this man must have had to be able to recognize a king, the Messiah, hanging on a cross, exposed, nearly naked, bleeding, dying, gasping for every breath. And yet the thief says to him, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He recognizes his king and he asks for grace. And Jesus, in his amazing grace, gives him what he asks for. He says to, to the thief, today you will be with me in paradise. It is the promise that we all cling to. Jesus, remember me. Jesus, show me your grace. And every time we turn to him and ask for that grace, Jesus assures us, you will be with me in paradise. This is a pandemic promise. It is the promise that we cling to over the last year, certainly, as we have struggled with the hazards of COVID. I saw photos just the other day of an older woman in an ICU bed. She was dying of COVID and the nurses were holding her hands as they were sedating her and preparing to intubate her. And I started to weep. We forget or we try to forget sometimes how hard this past year has been, what a struggle it has been. The trauma that we have endured collectively as a society. And here's the irony, and maybe it's not irony, maybe it is just grace. Jesus understands because, you know, COVID kills people by robbing them of breath. And Jesus died the same way. Crucifixion killed most of its victims by asphyxia because of the position in which they were, they were affixed to the cross. They, they couldn't catch their breath. And so when we think about people who, who do indeed die of COVID, struggling for breath in a hospital, Jesus understands. He went through that himself. And so all of, all of those with COVID who may seem to be alone in the ICU, they're not alone. Jesus is with them. He'll never let them go. He's holding their hands too. And then of course the darkness that came over the land at noon, that eerie otherworldly darkness I wonder, was it the father's grief as he watched the plan of salvation that had to happen that way unfold? Or was it the powers of darkness gathering, thinking that they were winning? Do you remember in the book of Exodus, the ninth plague on Egypt was a plague of darkness? And perhaps that's what happens 
when the Father simply withdraws his light, the darkness gathers. I suspect it was the power of darkness growing because Jesus had said in Gethsemane, this is your hour when darkness reigns. Forces of darkness thought they were winning. They thought it was almost over. The truth was they were almost over. But how frightening it must have been for those who were gathered around a cross and, and those outside the, around the whole area because there is some attestation to this phenomenon of darkness outside scripture. It wasn't just something that the Bible speaks about. And we as a whole human species fear the darkness. It's when we are most vulnerable or we feel the most vulnerable. We don't like darkness. If you think back to how people felt about eclipses of the sun and how they thought the end might be coming until science began to explain that it was just the moon passing in front of the sun. Taking away the light is indeed terrifying. And this is what was happening, it seems. The light seemed to be going out. But maybe what was happening, that darkness had a greater meaning. It was the passing away of the old creation and the beginning of something new. See you at 3 p.m.